We're back again. <laughs> Fun with Frisia. Yes. Um, so Susan and Kendra here again. Uh, today we're going to take you through a little bit more in depth of the predicate stuff that we didn't, you know, we lightly glazed over last week, but didn't really get super in depth to just because there's a lot to it and we didn't want to overwhelm you guys. Um, I guess first course of action, we should announce who wins this Yay! lovely little travel mug for, you know, liking our Facebook page. We appreciate it. We went from about 75 likes and followers to 199. So thank you guys for the support. We appreciate it. We're just fabulous. <laughs> and Jolene Caruso from New York, you are our lucky winner. Yay. So if you want to send a message to the um, Facebook page with your mailing address and all that kind of stuff, we'll get this shipped out to you. If we don't hear from you, Jolene, by our next video, we will draw another winner for it. Um, so just get in touch with us. Nice insulated travel mug. So, with a Frisian with on a Frisian it. With a on it. So, and shout out to the Crafty Equestrian in Connecticut for doing it for us. She's great. She does stall signs. She does all that jazz. If you need anything, she's awesome to work with. So, um, so do we want to hit on some of the comments we got? Yes, first? that would be fabulous. Um, so we received a message from um, Candice Bedell. And I'm, I apologize ahead of time if I pronounce your name incorrectly. So um, just with some feedback about some stuff that we could do, she was interested in some information about the mare lines, which we'll probably go into a little bit more in a different video, just because again, it's a lot to get into in this one. There's two whole books on them. So um, it's a lot of information. Um, you ex told us that your, um, I can't remember if you said mare or gelding, um, was out of Stam 46. Um, that is a cool line. It's an older line. Um, Wander and uh, Biencia 241. <laughs> yeah, were um, approved stallions out of that particular line. It's an Aga line. Yep. And, you know, it was, a, it was a neat line. It was a relatively, well, not relatively short, but a shorter line than a lot of the lines you see you know, like your more popular ones like Stom 50 and that kind of stuff. But two nice approved stallions out of it. So congratulations on that. That we know of. Yeah. Because we have the mare books. Yeah. These aren't in print anymore. No. But I was able to snag, snag these from Holland. Give you the mare lines. Yeah. Which so, give you a history. Yeah. It's kind of like kind of like what they do for the studs. You know, your stud book. It shows all the lineages and whatnot and... Starts at the first mare of that line and goes through, I think these are copyrighted 97, so it stops right about there, but shows pretty much all of the offspring. Um, any of the approved stallions that have come out of that line are there in bold, and it's it's a fun thing to do some research on and follow, you know, just because you see a lot of it for the stallions, but not so much for the mares. Um And sh you all also asked us- 46 is a good line. Yes, it is. And you also asked us, Candace, about some of the um, genetic issues and concerns when it comes to breeding. Um, and you said that you meant or that you knew about dwarfism and hydro, which, you know, fauna tests for. And but as far as some of the other things that you touched on, like colic and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, your best resource for that is probably going to be the Fenway Foundation for the Frisian Horse. Um, they're probably the... I would contact Yeah, them. they're the go-to for all things genetic Frisian. You know, they're a great advocate for the Frisian breed. You know, they want results of necropsies and stuff like that. If your horse passes away, they really kind of take point on, you know, anything genetics with this breed. So... If it's not something that necessarily Fauna has information readily available for, you know, Fenway Foundation is probably your your route to go. They may not be able to give you definite answers, but they can say, oh, yeah, you know, we're looking into that or that kind of thing. And um, that they, if you can't afford the necropsy, that um, you can go to the Fenway Foundation if your Frisian passes and um, see if they can help with, you know, help you get the necropsy so they have the results. Yeah. 
Um, the phone number is 888-838-0877. And it's Fenway Farms at yahoo.com. And it's Scott um, uh, Kellenhofer. I hope I said that close to right. <laughs> Scott, I'm sorry, but this is a, a very good foundation. Once again, the Frisian horse actively working towards the betterment of the breed. And they are a nonprofit too. So if at some point, you know, you're looking to make a charitable donation somewhere, you know, that's a that's a great it's a awesome. great place to make it because they really they are a huge Frisian advocate and you know we wouldn't we wouldn't have nearly the resources about this breed that we do if it weren't for if it weren't for these guys. So there's a show at the end of August. It's the um, Midnight Classic that's going to be at the Eastern States Exposition. And they are going to be raising money uh, for the Fenway Foundation. It is truly a big benefit for the Frisian horse. Yes. So thank you, Candice, for your messages and your feedback. And I hope that we hit on you know, most of what you were looking for. If you're not, send us, an, if we didn't, send us another message and we'll, you know, see what we can come up with for you. But Oh, and you mentioned you had to change your breeding. Um, oh, yes. yes. Yes, it must have been a mare. Yes. You had to change your contract for a stallion yeah. uh, midway uh, due to genetics. Yeah. Um, I guess it was genetics. It could have been inner breeding quotient. Yeah. Um, but we will get into that, and it's way big. Yeah. So our next video will help folks when you want to breed, um, picking the correct horse. Yeah, so hold on for that. Um, uh, another comment we received actually on the YouTube page inst instead of on Facebook was from Candace Barnhart, and I, again, apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Um Congratulations on your gypsums. Sounds Gibson. like they come out of some really cool lines. Um, I didn't realize that there was a gypsy competing at fourth level. So kudos to that. And hopefully your guys follow in their daddy's footsteps. Um, and Karen Petrus. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Petrus. Karen Petrus. <laughs> but thank you for the wonderful comments. We're having a lot of fun doing them. So it's glad to hear that you're enjoying watching them. Um, so thanks for just letting us know that we're not making total fools of ourselves. <laughs> we're having fun. And I hope everybody's learning because about the Frisian horse. It's, yeah. it's fabulous. It and, is. you know, to your crossbreeds, if you're going to cross, get your information, know what you're doing before you do it so you can make your best choices. Yep. Yeah. So I think with that, we'll kind of dive into... Predicates. The predicates, <laughs> which it's it's going to be a lot. So we'll try to keep it as concise and abridged as we can so you guys don't fall asleep on us. Um, but we'll basically go through any of the predicates that can be awarded either at the curring or after based on breeding. Um, and we'll go through each one of those kind of the requirements that they take. And um, that's probably where we'll leave it for today. Because if we get too much deeper than that, you guys are going to get bored really quick. So I, I think it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we do. I think it's exciting. We do, but you, wow. you may get bored after half an hour or so. so. Okay, star mare. Well, the, first of all, we explained before, uh, no preemie, first preemie, yeah. second preemie, third preemie. There's the full book and there's the stud book. You Preferably want to get your mare out of the full book. And into the stud into book. Into the stud book. You want to get your gelding out of the full book and have him in the ruin book, which is the gelding book. Um, and you'd like your gelding to go star. And you've got your stallion who you truly love. And you try to get <laughs> him in the stud book, which is extremely, extremely, hugely hard. But when you do it, it's a, a huge deal. But, you know, your stallion can go star as a, as a, a stud, a, you know, full book going star. Once they're in the stud book, they are star and they're able to breed. So, uh, per the rules. Yeah. But um, if your full book stallion goes star, that's great. So, star, go for it, Kendra. So, star is basically the step above stud book. You know, any... 
any adult horse that goes to an adult curring that is awarded stud book, that's kind of the, the first rung on the ladder. You're in the stud book, great. You can breed. Well, you can breed if you're in the full book, but you're more encouraged to breed if they're in the stud book. So that's kind of first rung on the ladder. St star is basically the next step up above that. It's like, what, 20... 24%, 23%, something like that. Make star. That make the star predicate. Um, they have to be three or older. Um, it can be awarded at any time after three years old. You know, you can take mm -hmm. your you can take your teenage mare, you and know, get and, star. and get star. So and you can repeat bringing your horses yeah, in. Yeah, I did that with my mare. You know, she went as a three-year-old. I wanted her to go for star. She only got stud book. We went back as a five-year-old and we got second preemie star. So, you know, you can take them as many times as, as you want. Um, they do have to be uh, 1.56 meters, which is, what, 15.2 hands high um, for the mares. Geldings or stallions have to be 1.58 meters. Um, and a star st or a stallion that goes star um, retains his star rating even if you guys decide to geld him down the road. He doesn't lose that, that right. star he predicate. Will be a star he gelding. will then turn into a star gelding, which a lot of people choose to do because sometimes it's easier to get. Just because of the extra testosterone and everything coursing through them, it's easier for, you know, the stallions to perform, um, you know, bigger movements, that kind of thing, than it is the gelding. So a lot of times you'll see young stallions go get their star rating. If they don't get the nod for second viewing or whatnot, then, you know, people will geld them and sell them as a phenomenal star gelding show horse. So that's kind of star in, in you know, and there's a, there's, you've got second preemie star, and first then you've got premies. first preemie star. So first preemie is just a little bit better than second preemie. A little bit bigger movement. You know, confirmation might be a little bit better. Um, you know. It's a higher graded horse. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of star in a nutshell. And then you have crone, which is crown. Yeah. K-R-O-N or C-R-O-W-N yeah. is crown. Those are those first preemie mares that are star that are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you say, I, this is the best of the star mares. So you say, I want my mare to go croon. And you bring her for croon. And you will get preliminary croon. Yeah, so there's there's kind of two levels of croon. Preliminary, preliminary and permanent. And permanent. Okay, and your preliminary, um, you have to be three years old. And the mare is gorgeous star mare, and they give her preliminary croon. And the way to make her permanent is you have to do the performance. And you need to take her, and it's an IBOP and ABFP that you have to do. You can do it riding. You can do it show driving. You can do it carriage driving. You have to get 77 points. Um, and when you look at how they walk and how they trot, they have to average a point of seven. For both of those, because they're two separate scores. Walks a score, trots a score. So they so have they to get average. They have to get sevens or better. Right. Which is trot for the Frisians, maybe not so hard for them to get a seven, but walk a lot of times horses struggle to really hit that it's seven getting mark. better it is it is, getting it is. Better. people are becoming much more aware of it and concentrating more on it so and working their horses in manners that yep. encourage and help the horse have a better walk yep um then you have uh if your horse gets a sport predicate and she's preliminary croon um and she can go f permanent Room. And we'll explain the sport predicate a few more bullet points down. <laughs> and a croon mare has to be 158 meter, or which is about 15 to hands. It doesn't, it doesn't always convert perfectly, so those are rough numbers. Yeah, if you go online and you start looking at the hand conversions. Yeah. The chart isn't perfect, but it's pretty close. So according to Fauna, 1.58 meter is 15 to hand. And you don't have to worry about that conversion because the judges measure it in meters and they take all they take care of that. So don't worry about that part. <laughs> okay. 
And then after croon, basically your step above croon is your model mare, which as a breeder, every breeder dreams to breed a model mare, which this wonderful lady has. <laughs> um, so that's a, you know, another predicate that's judged both on the exterior of the horse, looks, confirmation, you know, that kind of thing, but also their sport performance. So again, they have to do one of those IBOP or AVFP tests. They have to score... 77 or higher, just like for the crew requirements, they have to get sevens or better and walk and trot, just like uh, the crew requirements. Um, the biggest difference is, is if they're awarded preliminary model, the um, scores that you have to go get afterwards have to be done within one year of when they're awarded that preliminary title. So you have a little bit more of a time frame there than you do with the um, crew predicate. Um, the model predicate also has to be a mare that's seven or older. Um, so your younger mares can't get it. And they also have, have to have produced a living foal. Um, be seven years old. Yeah. And be 15, three ish or 1.6 meters high. So, um, model is definitely something that's not easy to obtain. About 1% yeah. less. You and know, you don't see many model mares. No, but when you do... Your jaw hits the ground because they're just, you know, they're absolutely amazing creatures. And with the croon, the preliminary, it is the same as the model. You can go preliminary croon yep. and then within the year, yep. go get your yep. um, permanent croon. Yep. And once again, if they get their sport, then they Im immediately become a permanent, permanent model. model or, yeah. So... Now we will talk about the wonderful confusion that is this sport predicate, which I think is something that we've seen become a lot more up and coming thing in the oh, last, it's, what, five to seven years, probably. Yeah, getting a sport, you'll look at a lot of your stallions, they just go for sport, yeah. the qualified stallions. And a lot well, of the mares are now, oh, too. Oh, yes, they are. You know, it's, I think people are really focusing more these horses on performance you know under saddle in the dressage ring in the driven dressage ring you know and really trying to put them out there as a pleasure performance horse and the sport predicate is a is a wonderful way to do that and if you need explanations on the ibop test and the abfp -E <laughs> it is it's it's right in your phone yeah. If you go to the Fauna website, they explain it beautifully. Yeah. And um, that and that was another comment we received. I will post links on the Facebook page for the Fauna website that has the drop down menu with all of this stuff that we've been talking about. Um, so I will make sure that that gets posted here in the next few days so that you guys have more readily easy access to that resource. And sport. This is, oh boy, a lot of fun. <laughs> what you have to do is go to a USEF, USDF, ADS, or the European KHNS. And these are the level, that's you, the level you have to be showing at. So they have to be rated shows. Yes. And they have to be... Five scores of 60% or higher at third level or higher than third level. Yeah. And the judges have to be um, three different judges. You can't just show under the no. same judge. Three different judges that are R-rated or higher. And you, have, you can get multiple scores on the same day, different judges. Um, and then once you do that, um, you will have your star, uh, sport, excuse yeah. me. And then there's the European, they call it Z level, Z1 level test 23, 24, 25, test 26, Oh, yep. five scores, 60% or higher. That's, you'll see when you're looking in the European, um, ads like if you like look they'll say z level yeah. one and it, it, that's the european and it does convert to the levels 
that we use as well. Yep. It's like hands versus meters. Yeah. You've got fourth, you know, first through fourth versus Z. So. And then the driving dressage, you need 10 points. Yeah. And the 10 points is FEI level test nine from three different FEI judges, R rated judges or higher. And the scoring is uh, six, if you get a 60 to 65, you get one point. 66 to 70, you get two points. 71 or higher is three points. Got to add up to 10. Yeah. And you must submit to Fauna upon completion. They keep track of your points. And once you get 10 driving, you'll get your sport. A pretty certificate. Yep. All laminated and all pretty. Pretty that your yep. horse is now a sport horse. Which you also get if your horse competes in the IBOP um, segments at the Kerr, you also get a nice laminated um, breakdown of your results that the judges awarded in either the ridden IBOP or the driving IBOP. And so. all these scores are taken and they're put on your horse's record yep. that you can access in your cell phone to say, oh, look. Which how Susan and I do multiple times a day. We it's, on it every it's day. It's probably an addiction. It is. It's fun. <laughs> um, do so, you preference? Sure. So now we kind of move into the um, predicates that are awarded based more on offspring and, this is and why breeding. You take your horses to the Yes. Curve. This is why we as breeders strongly encourage anybody who buys our offspring to cur their babies because it's not only helping your horse but it's helping us and our brood mares and ultimately the stallions as well so it's you know it's really a full circle thing we don't you know we get that the currings are expensive and that's it's an investment but we really hope that you do it because it helps everybody you know not just you your papers and by improving the mares yeah. and the stallions papers. It's it's really worth it. So the first um the first predicate there is preferon, which you see quite a few of if you look back on a full mother line of papers. Um it's based on the foals. A cool thing is both a stud book mare or a full book mare can be awarded the predicate of preferon. So she doesn't have to be a stud book star mare to get preferon. You know, if she's a full book mare, but she produces rocking babies, you know, she can still be awarded preferent, which is amazing. Um, and another thing is it can be requested even after the mare has passed away. So it may not necessarily help that mare owner, but it's going to help the generations beyond her um, to make their papers look better. So, you know, that's that's kind of a nice feature to have. And it's a true representation of that mare. It is. That what it, of what she produced, even if she's passed away, it is recorded and it represents how strongly she contributed to the stud book. Because that's all that's what this stud book is about, is preserving and improving the breed. So, you know, that's case in point of it right there. Um, so basically, um, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, well, it's based on the foals. And they look at the foals, and you want four offspring from this mare. You can buy any stallion that's a qual well, any stallion. But they want the qualified stallions with the cute little number behind them that are less than 1% of the population. That's yeah. what you want. But we need four quality horses. It can be a star model. It can be a star gelding. It can be a full book star stallion. It can be a stud book. Yay, if she makes a stud book stallion, that'd be awesome. Mm. Those are the, the 1% or less. Yeah, those are the breeding ones. And, or a stallion that at the inspection makes the second viewing. Yeah. So that will count to the mare as well. And she needs four of her offspring to have achieved any mix any of those. Mix of those. Yeah. Then she becomes preferent. If she has eight offspring that do it, you'll see a little star on her papers and it'll give the number. Star four, star eight, double preferent. Incredible. Yes. Yeah. So this is why the crazy Frisian breeding people <laughs> say, please, please take the... Your, yep. your horses to the currings because not only does it improve 
the, the papers on your horse and the worth, what your horse is worth, it will also um, benefit the mare and, and a, the stallion. And a lot of breeders, you know, I haven't got into it enough to do this, but a lot of the breeders will actually offer, you know, an incentive if you do agree to take your horse to the current, you know, maybe they'll pay for it. Yeah. Maybe they'll pay for it. Maybe they'll take a little bit of a price off the price tag. Maybe they'll like, I, like I know when I took Mara to the first time, um, her, her stallion who has since passed Minsa, um, was offering, I think it was a thousand dollars if you took and they got a, a first preemie star at their, you know, at their current. So, a lot of the breeders, stallion owners, that kind of stuff, do offer these incentives to really try to get people to take these foals, young horses, whatever, um, to these currents to try to bolster um, these predicates because, you know, that's what it's all about. And if you're breeding to a stallion, a qualified stallion, the number, he's in the stud book, but he's not passed yet his offspring Test. his test he's got four years to breed they look at the or a certain amount of babies but it's about four years and they look at the babies and they look at the babies to see if they improve on the mare does he benefit the breed uh then he'll get his full license to breed so you might breed to a stallion who hasn't yet passed that test and the breeder might say I'll pay for you to take this horse of yours yeah. to the AF, A, B, F, P. <laughs> there we go. Which is... Too the, many yeah, abbreviations. Yeah, we love acronyms. <laughs> so that way um, it, it, it will benefit him getting his full license if your horse performs well and it counts towards him. Yeah. Then there's preference stallions. There is preference stallions, which basically, in a nutshell, it has to do with that stallion producing really good offspring and really improving on the Frisian breed. Um, you know, if that stallion passes on good racial type, if it passes on sport horses, performance horses, you know, that kind of thing, that's, that's where the preference stallions come in. Um, you know, to have a preference stallion is, is kind of a, kind of a big deal. Um, because they're, I think they're kind of the creme de la creme, they are the of, creme you know, de la creme. the, the, an approved stallion. I mean, they're phenomenal anyways, but to have a preference approved stallion is just kudos to whoever's got one. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, and then, you can, then you'll see sport elite. Out exactly. There, which is if, if the sport elite. You'll see, like, I think Charda is yeah, sport I think he elite. Is. And he's just performed so well under saddle, in carriage, show driving. Yeah. And he scored the 77 or higher. And, you know, that's your sport elite. Yeah. So you have the prefront. And the prefront, I just brought this up. I hope my phone's going to be good. It is the KFPS Stallion Information. And it is right there on the Fauna website um, for members. You can go and uh, there's the stallion results for dwarfism and hydrocephalus to see whether or not the stallion you chose is a carrier. A carrier. Um, and then this is the, okay, go ahead and download it. Just do it. <laughs> um, Technology, gotta love it. Is, is, this is fabulous. This is right here all the information you want to know on your beautiful stallions yep. that you want to choose. It gives all their linear score charts. It gives their um, performance test results from the from the 70 day testing. You know, it's it is super in depth. It gives their percentages of white. It gives their you know their height, their everything. You know, okay, this is Chala four five four. Okay, there's Chala right yep. there. He just he went preference this last year. Yay, Yay Chala, and um, that was his score. And then when you you want to go down and you say, 
Okay, we'll make this smaller. This is the uh, inspection results. And you can go and find all the inspection results. As Kendra just mentioned, uh, it gives like a uh, percentage of marks allowed, percentage of marks not allowed. You know, your white. So your legal white versus your illegal white. Stars are, are okay. As long as it's small enough. Small star is just perfectly fine. And Weight on the body is not, not good. Roan is not good. You'll see older horses yep. that have white on they their gray, face. They grow, gray out That's a lot fine. like a dog. But um, And doesn't this website also list how many um, offspring they've had and how many of those offspring are stud book and star? And I mean, it's it's... And it, it's a great resource to have. I've actually printed it off because I hate looking it up. On the oh, phone. I know. It makes me dizzy some days. <laughs> so I've actually printed it off and put it in a binder. So I have it just because it's, you know, it's a good resource to have. And they update it um, as new approved stallions become available. Um, like and like Hatsa, 425, right here. How many stud book horses? 135. How many star? 109. Percentage of star. You want to look for a stallion that has a high percentage of star. Yeah. 47.3. He's had 11 crown, one model. Um, so far, it looks like uh, zero preferent. And zero um, prestati. And zero prestati. 17 in the ruin book. RB is the gelding book, which is extremely important. Show your geldings yes. at the current. Please do. And... Um, I, no approved sons, but this is updated like every year. But you know? but fourteen fourteen sports. That's pretty awesome. And one sport elite, and and, he, and he's got four hundred and thirty five uh, preferent points. So there's your points for going preferent for the stallions. Yes, yeah. and um, he has marks allowed one point one percent. That's low. It is very low. And marks not allowed, 0.9%. Which is so awesome. So that's so if you, awesome. So if you have a horse, like, let's say, out of Fritza, because Fritza was kind of notorious for, for white, you know, my mare's out of Fritza. If you have a Fritza mare that you know, you know, probably has a high possibility of white, you know, something like him based on white percentages would be a good option. I don't know about the other stuff. Um, but... You know that that resource, as far as stallions goes, is a is an awesome resource to have. And just we'll just do the mares. Mares are extremely important. This is one of the mare books. This is Kendra's mare book. I encouraged her to get them, <laughs> and I it was them. like pulling teeth from a hen to try to find them. Just forewarning you, I ended up buying them off of a wonder, wonderful gentleman on Facebook from Holland. And it took me like four weeks to get them because apparently trying to get books through customs is a pain. But I got them nonetheless. <laughs> and this, what was the question with Stom 46? I think she was just asking about it in general. She wasn't okay. really sure what they were all about. Stom 46 is right here. Yeah. Here are your Stoms. Yeah. So and that's kind of the mare that started the line. That's basically where it starts. You know, it's 3310. Yep. Yeah. Tells you who owned her and all of that jazz. And her offspring. Yep. And it gives you who begat who yep. on the mare line. Mare, here's her stuff. So these are all offspring off of that first original mare. And how they did. Yep. And Wander yep. is from our, our stallion yep. Wander. What's and, his number? Uh... I four or something. I it? hate saying this. A qualified stallion. Three five two. I love saying three five two afterwards because they earned it. So and I, then I, we also had uh, Bienza two, two four, four one. one. And one of the stoms that make them has the highest percentage of qualified stallions is Stom fifty, um, which is who Merida is out of. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. My my little girl Merida. And Zip so, zipper head of a wonderful mare so is, is out of Stom fifty. <laughs> and so's Echo yep. and Evita. Yeah. And but you go to Stom fifty and you know you can read there's English, so you can read in yeah, English. I don't know if you can get these anymore. I don't know if you can. Because so so they're actually in Dutch, English, and I guess I don't know what N is. 
yeah. whatever n is it's also it's all in columns each column is a different language so. and it, this is old these yes. are old books i think the copyright on i would 97. love to see or know where there is the stoms online for mares because you can look everything you want up on a stallion yeah but you really have to research your mares and the Stom lines, they talk about the Stom lines, and they'll say, oh, Stom 50 has the highest percentage. And they, of... and they usually announce them at the Curs, too, yes. as as your horse is being presented. They give a rundown of out of this but if Stom, whatever. Anybody out there knows another resource besides these, these books. Because, unfortunately, at this point, in 2019, these are getting dated. Like, They're dated. Like, Merida's mom is in this book. But Merida is but not. But Merida is not. So if anyone, because you can look it up online and go back, but it doesn't give you this beautiful history right. of the Stom line, which would be the Mare line, which is, is so powerful to know because the Mares are equally, if not to me more, important as far as, as being a breeder. I am a Mare line yeah. freak. And I, it takes me a lot of reading and research, and um, but it, it, I wish there was just one good resource yep. for uh, the, stoms. the stoms. And I think the last predicate that we didn't touch on is Prestati. Oh, we got to do Prestati. Yeah. Which there isn't a whole lot to it. Well, I mean, there's a lot to it's, it, but but in a nutshell, it's basically if you have if that mare has three direct offspring so can't be grand grandbabies it has to be son or daughters that are awarded the sport predicate then that mare is awarded the prestati um predicate so she would be on her papers, it would say her name and then most likely star and then probably preferant and then also prestati. So she would have quite the quite the, the quite the list of names after her actual I'm name. I'm looking for oh there she is. This is one of my favorite mares and I love her <laughs> name. Okay. Her name is Fabiola. <laughs> and you hear me say fabulous all the time, but Fabiola, um, she is star, preferent, and prestati. She was born in 1983. And when you go on, you're, you're a member and you're excited like I am about breeding, you can go on and do a lot of research, yep. including interbreeding quotients and breeding values. And I'm going to hit offspring. So I'm back at Fabiola. And... Oh, Lordy Lou, she produced two qualified stallions. I love that. Which is amazing. Which is Ulka, 338, and a Carl, 370. And so this beautiful mare who went preferent and prestati, here they, here's your research. So there you go. There's mm -hmm. her offspring. And you can see how they did. Um, uh, what, what preemies, the offspring, how many times they tried. It keeps record of who the sire is and the registration number. So that's a Prestati mare. So yeah. she's had three or more that have reached sport. Yeah, which is, which is a feat in and of itself. I mean, you, there's a lot of time, a lot of training, a lot of commitment that goes into making either a mare or a gelding or a stallion into a sport predicate animal because there's just a lot of commitment, you know, yeah. takes a lot of work, good trainer, good rider, good driver, you know, takes a village, that's for sure. So what are we going to do this next time? So, well, we kind of have, I think we could do two options. Um, we have the, as Susan mentioned, the Midnight Summer Classic show coming up, not next weekend, but the following weekend in West Springfield, Mass. So maybe we'll do a video about some of the wonderful Frisians that show in the open ring, or this particular show is Ipsha Regional Championships. Um, so maybe we'll do a video about showing your Frisian. Um, we've also got Cur season coming up. Here, the beginning of October, my mare will be going. 
And so at some point we'll probably do a couple of videos about curring because that's going to be another one kind of like this one that there's a lot involved and if we try if we try to do it all in one it's you guys are going to get glazed and have drool coming out of your lips you know it's just it's the way it is so um our next video might be a curring video it might be a show video let um, us know what you yeah it's let us know what yeah. what would interest you. And I'll, you know, both Susan and I are going to be at regionals. So maybe we'll try to go Facebook Live for a couple of the oh, cool classes. And we can like, talk to some people. Yeah. You know, like. What may, do they do? Yeah. Maybe we can go live for like the fine harness classes. And or, we can vi visit Gypsum. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be some gypsies there and some gypsons and. You know, there'll be some dressage, there's going to be a dressage ring there. So, you know, maybe we can go over and take a look at some of the, some of the dressage classes. We'll try to keep you guys. Because it's Ipsha, so yeah. we'll have some of the, um, part breed, part classes. breed classes. Yeah. You know, this is a qualifying show for Worlds. So anybody who's showing at this show is hoping to move on to Worlds in Ohio. So, um, we'll try to take you guys there with us and keep you involved, even if you can't be there and be on the lookout for the next video. Yay! Oh wait, wasn't there one thing you wanted to talk about? Oh, the last See, this thing. This is why we do this. <laughs> she, she's my other part of my brain. So one of the things we're saying that the curring's brutal. It's not really brutal. What 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 we're used to in North America is going in a ring and you first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You get go in and walk out. You go in, you get judged, you walk out. You might have a question: Why didn't I do as well as I really think I should have done? And you go and you put a request into the steward to hope that the judge will come and talk to you. Yeah. The thing with the Frisian horses at the Currings is that it's real time. Mm -hmm. It's right there. You're going to hear what's beautiful about your horse. You're going to hear what's not correct about your horse because there's no perfect horse. No, there isn't. But it really, really helps for you to hear what it is. So if you're going to breed, you can, you can make a smart choice on the stallion because you're being you got some honesty about your horse and how to improve it if you're working your horse the wrong way oh you've got a kind of a weak back yeah. and some weak loins going on and it's not really so much confirmational that you've been working them really in a high frame they need to you, get down you and, need stretch. To get in and stretch and work that back and yeah. work those loins you're gonna learn all this you'll you'll hear honesty yeah they'll even if your shoes if your feet aren't good they'll tell you yeah so it's it's not it's 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 beautiful people yeah. I, you it's, get barn wine you love yeah. your baby and it's you know? not that and they're not doing it from a place to be mean it's a place for improvement yeah they're breaking down your horse and saying here here's our critique of this horse this is do, what's good do what you want with it and this if is improvement yeah if you want to improve on it then you can go and say okay we need to work on stretching down rounding our back and you know using our hind end or we can just keep going the way we're going so it's just it's a very different world than the show world you know first second third fourth fifth sixth and you don't know why right so when we say that it's that it's brutal or that it's brutally honest or you know it that kind of thing the shades off the barn yeah. blindness yeah so that that's all that we're not trying to scare anybody away from doing the curring because it's this big scary it thing it is to improve it is and that's what it's all about so we just wanted to make sure we touched on that before people watch these and like oh my goodness i'm not gonna curve my horse now they scared me so cur your horse cur your horse please especially okay. your geldings <laughs> oh we love the geldings <laughs> so with that, I think we'll leave you with an ep another episode of Fun with Frisians. Fun with Frisians! Again, like the Facebook page, leave us comments, subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, we're doing this all for you. Maybe we'll do another giveaway here in the future if we can get enough followers. And we'll see you at some point between now and, and regionals. Yay! Thank Make you guys! <laughs>